We are about to start an occupation of this museum. We are in a protest against Adani, the sponsor of this gallery. Adani is a coal producer, environmental criminal. Okay. And okay. You tell me what you want. of weapons against Palestinians in Gaza. We are about to start a weekend occupation, peaceful occupation of this museum. And we will now hear from Chris Packham, who is joining us today. Chris, up to you. I think we better go up here. This is the Science Museum. And for me, science is the art of understanding truth and beauty. The truth is that the sponsors of this exhibition, Adani, are the single largest private developer of coal in the world. The truth is that science has given us the knowledge to know that if we are to survive on a sustainable planet, we need to keep that coal and all of the other fossil fuels in the ground. Adani has been alleged to have been involved in fraud, corruption and human rights violations. Its association with coal, fraud, corruption and human rights violation was known to the Science Museum when they first did their due diligence. And what they've done here is sanctioned Adani as a company by sidestepping to their renewable energy division. This is not something that has been revealed by we protesters, but has been known to the board of the Science Museum from the outset in 2021. And on that account, no less than two of their trustees have resigned, and one of their former directors has left his advisory role. I first came here as a child to the Science Museum. I see it as a bastion of the joy of human imagination, creativity, ingenuity. The last thing we need here for future generations of young people is greenwashing of this order. It's something we must push back against forthrightly because we're running out of time. Our mission here is to peacefully communicate our complete disgruntlement and abhorrence of the idea that this institution in 2024 would sanction the sponsorship of an exhibit like this to a fossil fuel driving company, a company which is burning our planet alive. And on that account, some of us will occupy this building for the foreseeable future a couple of days. Communication is necessary. So, we are going to build a pile of coal and we're going to ask all of the visitors to this gallery to contribute to that pile by telling the Science Museum what they think about this sponsorship and this attitude in 2024. It's peaceful, it's creative, it's imaginative and it's something that we must do at this point. The idea that young people would come here to learn about science, sponsored by such a company, revolts me and revolts most of you. We have to take action and this is our action today. Thank you very much. My name is Jeff Fogger. I'm a scientist, I'm an ecologist, and I am a member of Scientists for Extinction Rebellion. And I'm here today really in the context of, a, of an organization that we uh, belong to, a coalition called Fossil Free Science Museum, which has been seeking for some years now to encourage the Science Museum to end sponsorship by fossil fuel industries. We undertook first to, as a coalition, to understand the origins and the nature of this arrangement. Um, that meant looking at the due diligence that was done on, on bringing Adani in as a sponsor. 
It also involved looking at the criteria that the Science Museum trustees were using to select sponsors. Uh, and we discovered that both um, the due diligence and the uh, the justification for sponsorship from Adani had very serious flaws. So we brought this to the trustees of the museum. We wrote to them collectively. We engaged some of them individually and uh, and and sought to ask the question, how did this happen? Why were these these uh, issues overlooked? It is not, as the director of the Science Museum claims, um, an exhibit about the greatest challenge that faces us in the future of climate change. It's not really about climate change. And that's a great disappointment. There's very little there, uh, just a couple short videos that explain the science underpinning how we understand how climate change is, is happening and uh, the causes of climate change and, um, and the urgency with which we need to address it. This exhibit is basically about a few energy technologies. It avoids a discussion of fossil fuels. Uh, it focuses on um, wind power, solar power, nuclear power, Although the exhibits were competent in, in a lot of what they said, all that for me really sapped the sense of urgency that we face in climate change. This is an exhibit that sort of tells you, and I'm thinking particularly of a young scientist coming in, uh, you know, uh, thinking about a career in science. It sort of says, don't worry, we've got this in hand. We've got the technology. It's not really that big a problem. It's underway. Hello, my name's Louisa and I'm hosting you for this live stream of the occupation of the Science Museum in London by the Fossil Free Science Museum Coalition. This is a number of groups, activists and campaigners and uh, lovers of the Science Museum, to be honest, working together in order to protest the fact that this new energy gallery called Energy Revolution has been sponsored by one of the world's uh, largest coal conglomerates and fossil fuel conglomerates, uh, which is Adani. So Adani is in fact the world's largest uh, private uh, developer of coal-fired power stations. Uh, it has interests in India, it has interests in Indonesia, uh, and it runs the Carmichael coal mine, which is uh, one of the largest um, coal mines that has been founded lately in Australia in 2021. In fact, it started producing uh, coal. And there are so many different concerns about Adani's environmental record, its human rights record, uh, and it's working with indigenous peoples. Um, it's been lambasted for the way that it's been treating people across those countries as well. Uh, so we are here to say this is not a suitable sponsor for the Science Museum in any of its exhibitions, let alone one that's supposed to be dealing with the future of energy. Uh, so officially it's Adani Green Energy that's funding this gallery, um, but we're going to talk to lots of people here who have evidence to say that actually they're all part of the same uh, family and there's lots of uh, very questionable practices that have gone on with the Science Museum actually coming to terms with how it's going to fund this exhibition. Um, and we will, t like I said, talk to scientists uh, and activists who've been working on this for many years. This isn't just a, a one-off thing, it's a sustained campaign against the Science Museum fossil fuel sponsorship and particularly against Adani. This is a, uh, just turn around so we can see. This is going to be an occupation that the supporters hope are, is going to last for the whole weekend. In fact, we're here on a Friday night. We've had several announcements that have said that the Science Museum has now closed its doors, uh, but we've stayed here on the top floor of the mezzanine, which has this new exhibition with lots of very interesting gadgets and pieces of history from the Science Museum's collections. Uh, and the idea is to provide a peaceful protest, um, a peaceful protest to say that we will not tolerate 
this uh, climate wrecking um, businessman who's a, a billionaire with a huge carbon footprint from being greenwashed by his partnership with the Science Museum. So I'm now going to talk to some of the people who are here on this occupation and um, just to get a bit of a uh, frame of what's going on here there is a huge pile of coal being built by our activists now the idea being that in the morning when we have visitors come back into this gallery uh, we weren't preventing them from visiting just a little earlier the idea is that this will be an installation of sorts an engagement with the public in order to make them aware of the sponsorship that's going on at the museum and to invite them to leave their own um, in, to invite them to leave their own ideas, thoughts and um, judgments on cards, sort of form a sort of display, um, and then we leave them for the Science Museum to consider whether it has actually made the right judgment um, as to their sponsors and whether this really is for public benefit for this new exhibition. Now, I've got somebody who I'd like to talk to first, who's been involved with the Science Museum's um, well, the campaigns against the Science Museum for quite some time. I'm going to talk to Dr. Aaron Thierry. Hello. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. I'm just going to pass you a microphone so that we can hear you well. Do you mind just yep. putting that on your lapel? Okay. Aaron, we've actually met here quite a few times in the past, I think. Fortunately, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And why are we here again? Can you just explain to viewers? Well, we're here this time because Unbelievably, the Science Museum have opened another gallery that's sponsored by a fossil fuel co company. Mm. Uh, the first time that I think we, we came here was because Shell was sponsoring a new exhibit. Yep. This time it's Adani, which are the world's largest uh, private producer of coal. And so, you know, we're saying, you know, not only was it bad enough that they've got galleries sponsored by oil companies, they're now partnering with a, a coal company as well. And it's just nuts because this is actually a gallery about um, energy and climate change. And so the worst sponsor you could think to have for a gallery like this is one that is heavily invested in expanding coal production. And um, it's basically, um, you know, we're back here again to say this just can't carry on, right? Mm. We need to stop these sponsorship deals going ahead. The, the museum has to cancel these connections with fossil fuel industry and, and you know, find partnerships that are not with companies that are you know, polluting the planet and destroying our future. Mm. Um, the future of the young people who are coming to this museum, right, to learn about all of this stuff. And, you know, it's not just that this company as well is incredibly um, polluting in terms of its business. It's also, you know, famous for carrying out human rights abuses. Mm. So, you know, this is a company that's, um, you know, has been found also to have committed fraud in its business practices, or very likely that it has. This is right? like a rat's nest, isn't it, of the climate <laughs> yeah. justice. Yeah. It really shows how climate justice has all these different elements coming together, and it's not just about emissions. It's something I wanted to ask you about, actually, yeah. because there was an article, I think it was in The Guardian, um, this exhibition has just opened, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid I can't remember the name of the scientist who was quoted as saying, well, you know, it's okay because Adani Green, you know, they're leading the way. Mm in renewable energy, so we should kind of give them a bit of slack. Yeah. Is that how people here and yourself so consider is, that? Yeah. This is the line that the museum's been running themselves, which is you know, that what they've partnered here with is a, an arm of Adani, right? It's part of the business, which is its renewable arm. And so that's what they're saying is, but it's, it's a workaround, right? Because actually it's all part of the same thing. And, yeah. um, you know, actually we, we know as well that Adani have basically financed coal mine expansion through borrowing against its renewable arm, right? They're not separate at all, they're no. completely entangled. And so for the, for, for the museum and, and its defenders to say, well, hang on, you know, this is completely different, this is separate, this is the good Adani, it's, it's, it's nonsense, you know, it's, it's all part of the same thing. They had the uh, head of the, the whole business empire um, himself come and, you know, present the, at the opening and you know, he's getting all the kudos for that, you know, as himself and his business, uh, looking like he's being responsible, and he's not, right? His whole business is based on, uh, you know, ignoring all the scientific warnings that are saying we have to leave the coal in the ground. Um, the overwhelming majority of the coal in the ground, according to the climate science, which apparently this museum says we should pay attention to, and yet ignores itself. You know, that's, that's the paradox. 
that's forced us to come here today as scientists and as young people and, and others who are concerned about what this museum is doing. You know, ultimately, this is a public institution. Mm. It's, it's our museum as much as anything. And we, we believe in the idea of educating about science and what that stands for but not at the same time as greenwashing these companies, right? It's, it's a perversion of that, that good intention. It's extremely problematic. And you're right, a public, public body is here for public benefit. Mm. Is this in the public's interest to give them a false picture of, of what's being perpetuated around the world by this conglomerate? Exactly. Uh, you know, ultimately it's blood money, right? Um, and so I think the museum should be better than that. We should stand for, you know, for the facts of the science and, and for you know, a better world, a better human world, mm. which means a world without human rights abuses, right? So there are partners that you could look to that, that haven't got that track record. Um, and just to make it even worse right now, we also know that Adani is, um, one, another arm of Adani is in arms manufacturing and they're mm. currently selling weapons to Israel, which are being used to bomb Gaza. So, you know, every way you look at it, th th this is the worst possible partnership that you could imagine. And What's particularly, I think, telling is the way that the museum has reacted to any challenges about this. Mm. You know, they've just completely blanked anybody from being able to raise these issues. Um, and so, so even when their own trustees resigned from the board in protest, uh, and their own you know, former director resigned from the, the uh, advisory board in protest at this going ahead, you know, it's, it's as though there's no response to that. They, they just carry on regardless. Um, yeah. And so I think there's something really troubling now, obviously, uh, you know, at the top of the management of this museum, that they are just completely impervious to kind of logical argument and, you know, ethical responsibilities that are being asked of them. And I think, you know, I think we really need to start asking questions about what is going on at the management level of this institution. Mm. Um, What's their ulterior motive? Exactly. If, like, if, why are they continuing with partnerships like, like this when they're ruining the reputation of an institution yeah. like this? I mean, we're going to keep protesting until they stop. We're not going to give up. So ultimately, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> but, but what we're saying is, like, well, why drag this out? You know, mm. like you could be, you know, they could be on the right side of history here and they're refusing to do the right thing. Whereas other museums have gone and, and cut ties with fossil fuel industries. You know, in the UK, pretty much every single other major cultural institution in this country has cut ties with all fossil fuel sponsors over the last few years, mm. right? So why is it that the museum that supposedly represents science and reason is the last one to do that, it, it, you know? Mm. Um, and so I think, you know, we do see other science museums as well in other countries that have cut ties with fossil fuel companies. In, in Holland, for example, the, the Science Museum in Amsterdam have cut mm. ties with Shell. You know, we could see that here happening here in London. I really hope we do see it very soon, but we're going to carry on coming back and doing these kind of protests until we see that change. Aaron Jury, thank you very much. Here all weekend. Here all weekend, <laughs> yeah, two nights. We might yeah. see you again. Thank right. you very much. Bye. We're moving on now. I was really interested by what um, Aaron Tiri said about blood money. So uh, you're very dark. There we go. Um, so we've got a representative here from our South Asian um, community and activists. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and talk a bit about that side of the story, the human rights pieces that uh, Adani is perpetuating? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Wadiga Singha and I'm from um, uh, International Solidarity for Action Freedom in India. And uh, I'd like to... Sorry, let's get your microphone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's pop you on there. there. Okay. Yeah, so we were, you were talking about blood mining, and I'd actually like to start with what the gentleman before me was talking about, that there is a genocide happening in Gaza right now in which Adani is very much implicated. And I've been looking at the exhibits around here, and if you look at that exhibit there, there's a stamp from the 1950s from the United States of America saying, Atoms for Peace. And to have something like that at this time, then the United States is also very much implicated in the in the um, uh, in what's happening in Gaza. But also, if you look at the stamp again and the language on it, it is very colonial. It talks about an inventiveness of man, which is only very much a Western imperial uh, sort of, uh, as if nobody else knows anything about invention. And for somebody like Adani, coming from a country which was colonized and, and uh, showcasing this, but not showcasing 
what were the energy revolutions happening prior to what was the colonial period is just missing from here. Mm. I, I couldn't see, couldn't see that at all. We're talking of mathematical models, but when we look, we have sub, the world has survived billions of years uh, uh, with, with human civilization on it because the people, uh, the generations long before us, lived in sustainable ways. They thought through things. They were, mm. It's not that they were not using things. It's not that they might not have mined. After all, we know that copper vessels go back thousands of years. But why is it of concern now? It's of concern now because of what we've done in the past 200, 300 years alongside the colonialism and imperialism of the world uh, and the extractive capitalism that it needs to keep going. So I also think that coming from a country which was colonized and to actually be uplifting all that in the, in the energy revolution looks really... Um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's greenwashing more than a green revolution. What do you think his motives are for that? Is it quite obvious from the kind of campaign material that we've seen about the gallery opening? And what's your take? Well, yes, it's more about personal, trying to, you know, um, obviously trying to make a space for yourself, maybe in a kind of history which you think is going to be the right history and um, not, not considering how you're leaving behind everybody else in it. So it's very much, to me, um, kind of... Uh, the, the, the top one percent doing things just for themselves mm. as part of that. So thinking about the Indian context, because I know obviously yeah. you're following this very closely, there's lots of things going on in India to do with Adani that are really problematic and scary for certain um, communities. Would you be able to um, expand a bit on that for viewers who aren't familiar? Yeah, so these, the areas where Adani is doing his mining, but also where he's setting up his solar, camp, uh, solar uh, farms, of which also we have an example here in the, in the exhibition, there is no um, um, sort of mention of what were, who were the people who were displaced from the lands, who were the people who actually were not consulted and should have been consulted to ask if they wanted these things happening on their lands, mm. whose forests are being cut. So these are the indigenous peoples of India, the Adivasis of the, in, the sen, in central and eastern India especially. And in fact, um, uh, tomorrow, as our um, occupation here continues, there are going there's, a, there's another uh, protest in India, a year-long protest, which has been going on near one of his thermal plants, where also they're going to have a big gathering at the moment to protest more and more, because what is happening is that the um, Adani is working very closely with the government of India, getting full support from the institutions, especially the security, and there is tremendous repression also in these areas. There are arrests being made, false charges being put on people. And uh, the idea is to um, generally uh, create that fear in people so that they don't come out and protest. Leaders are being picked up in the middle of the night, early in the morning, people, you know, security forces just coming to the houses, just picking them up, putting them behind bars on, on charges of sedition, whereas all that they've been doing is peacefully protesting. So the implication being this is a concerted effort between Modi's government and Adani to silence that dissent absolutely. so they can go ahead yeah. with mining. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting point because we come here for the weekend and, you know, it's we don't know how the museum and maybe the police are going to react, but this is coming here and spending a weekend here in occupation is nothing like what the Adivasis in India are facing when they're actually looking at their lives, their livelihood, their land, all being taken away. Absolutely. In fact, um, last time we did the um, uh, action here, after that we heard that in the Hasdiyo forest, which is one of the most eco-sensitive, beautiful areas in, in central India and home to many Adivasis who've lived there, again, as I said, in sustainable ways, um, those forests are being cut down for uh, some of the coal mines that Adani uh, is, is, has got in India. And uh, a protest site there was burned down. It was just burned down in um, a couple of days after uh, we had done our action here. It was really, really... Um, but, but the people are amazing. The resistance, I have to say, is amazing. It, 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 the word doesn't get out so much because the Indian media is mm. bought out and it will not tell you. But these resistance movements are very historical. They um, are, uh, I mean, these people, uh, the Adivasis, who 
who are who are doing these movements they are extremely impoverished there's no there's no money supporting all this mm. and to be able to continue resisting just because you can see that they they know that they are the people who are saving the forests for the rest of the world so that we can live and and enjoy our lives so um and and their courage is just tremendous it mm. is just inspirational um and i i can only say thank you to them it's an amazing because adani has tentacles going around the world it's an amazing way of connecting different campaigns i wonder do they know about what we're doing yes <laughs> <laughs> they do know what about what you, what what you're doing um uh, they uh, there has been um um uh, uh, uh information going back yes mm. definitely mm-hmm. and we definitely know what they're doing and yes. we're thanking them for mm. it as well because yeah, like absolutely you said, they are mm-hmm. acting on our behalf no. in on these front Sometimes. lines absolutely mm. thank, thank you so much i really you. appreciate you giving yeah. your um, perspective <laughs> if I could take your microphone again from you. Thank you, we'll see you later. Let's explore the rest of the occupation now for our viewers. So the coal uh, pile has grown. I'm not sure whether that's it finished, um, but all of this had to be brought into the museum um, in backpacks and um, (laughs) various ingenious ways um, so that we it was able to be to come in um, and not be confiscated. Um, but like I said before, absolutely no will, ill will um, intended to either the museum's collections or its staff. This is a peaceful protest uh, and it's all about raising awareness and really putting a bit of pressure on the museum um, management. As um, Dr. Thierry was saying so eloquently, um, this is, this is really a campaign from the top. Um, Sir Ian Blatchford, Sir Ian Blatchford, who's the director of the Science Museum, um, he, as a result of the, uh, the due diligence report that has been exposed as not being followed, um, the trustees now have to uh, sign off any further sponsorship deals. Uh, he can't just single-handedly do so. So there have been some... Um, there have been some successes from this campaign, um, as well as the re- resignation of ex-director uh, Professor Chris Rapley, who used to be, um, he, he was on the advisory board, and he used to be a director, and then two other trustees as well. So bit by bit, we're chipping away. Uh, I'm going to see if there's any other scientist who would, or any other <laughs> members of the protest who would like to have a chat. Oh, I see a hand coming up. Hello. <laughs> Oh, I think we're just being asked to stand in a circle, but let's see if we can have a quick word. May I put that, or you put that on your lapel? That's a microphone? Yep. Hello, Hello so another scientist. Would you like to introduce yourself and say why, why are we doing this today? Why are you doing this? What, what really riles you up about Adani sponsorship? So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Sophie Renner. I'm a particle physicist, and I know firsthand about the influence that the Science Museum has because I grew up in London, and coming to the Science Museum is, is one of the main reasons why I am a physicist. Right. Um, it really sparks children's imaginations, and I think it can be a huge force for good in that sense. So it makes me very angry that they're using that influence to greenwash this terrible coal company, um, sort of, which is clearly trying to give the impression that it's it's going to be part of, you know, the future of energy. But year on year, it's just increasing its coal production, and it clearly has no intention um, of, uh, yeah, of, of of changing its ways. Um, so yeah, that that makes me. That makes me really sad, um, and uh, yeah, that's why I'm here today to show them that the scientific community is not on their side with this one. Yeah, and I suppose museums, like scientists, are supposed to be showing a balanced view. They're supposed to take the evidence and then, you know, engage the public with a narrative that makes sense. You know? Yeah, and. Is this a balanced way of going about it by having a sponsor like this? No, because you can't tell the truth when your your sort of uh, your your sponsor decides what goes in the what goes in the exhibit and what you know how how it's how it's portraying them as an industry. Mm. Um, 
yeah, it's not it's not scientific at all, and it's it's very misleading. And we, you know, this is the time when we really need to be educating the public properly and showing like what actually the future will look like and what solutions are needed. Mm. And this is this is just a incredible perversion of that. Mm. We should say that. There was a, a gagging clause in the original Adani um, agreement with the Science Museum that was then taken away right. after a Channel 4 investigation. However, it required that investigation and you know concerted efforts from campaigns like this to actually make them look at their contracts and say, are we maybe... Um, <laughs> Is yeah. this maybe not a good a good look for our museum in terms of its um, objectivity? Exactly, and yeah. you know clearly Adani are very happy with with the way that the with the way that the sponsorship is going, and that is not <laughs> that is already telling you that um, that it's not um, yeah it's not telling the truth about mm. about Adani and, and companies like it. Not an equal partnership, perhaps. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Our protesters are now having another photo opportunity with their coal pile. Oh, this is the scientists in particular. So scientists for XR have been a really key influence in this ongoing coalition campaign against the Science Museum. And generally they will say, we love the Science Museum. Um, you know, we, it's, it's the sponsorship of these galleries that is a real ethical problem. So we're here to try and uh, influence this public body for the better. And because I know that we are a coalition, um, well done, and we've really spoken proud of to two scientists already, and we've spoken to somebody from um, the Indian Academic uh, Freedom Movement. Um, I think what we're going to do, I've just seen a friend of mine, and actually we're going to give a museum perspective now. So I'm going to do a little a bit of a double act with um, Pete. Hello, Pete. Hello. <laughs> so, um, um, now, you've got a bit of experience working in the museum. I do, what, yes. What, what experience have you got with the So I've worked, so just in case people have just joined the live stream, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll point, I'll put that on you, or just hold that, Pete. Sorry. So, if anybody's just joined the live stream, I was doing the live stream. I'm also here because I have uh, experience in I work in museums myself. I've been working in museums for seven years as an education professional. So, uh, this gallery is just about to open up for uh, school visits in the next week. Uh, that's the bread and butter of my job, and. I really believe passionately that museums have a role to play in providing that space where people of all, from all walks of life, especially the younger generations, can come and actually really grapple with difficult ideas, including climate change. It's the leading cause of our time that we need museums for, as well as things like decolonisation, which all come together in this issue with Adani. So I really, I'm very passionate that this sponsorship deal is not in the public interest at all and that's that's what museums are here for museums association says in its code of ethics that we should be acting in the public benefit at all times um, and i believe that that is that is actually being um there's a risk here that there's a real reputational risk to the science museum that they're not acting in the public benefit is there anything in the museum specifically that you've seen that if a school visit was to come here you would be thinking that's not right that shouldn't be there I don't want to criticise the curators of the museum because I think um, from their perspective they have a collection, they have a big collection in their vaults and they want to make the best use of that to tell a story. Um, it might not be the story that we particularly expect but I, I don't want to really put the blame on them for anything. I haven't actually seen the whole exhibition, I wouldn't be able to make that judgement as yet. You know, They've got like the first electric car. Um, from the, I think it's like, the, it's actually the 1890s, and that is amazing. Um, however, I would expect to see a little bit more in this exhibition about the actual science of climate change, which is, you know, I'm making people understand what's really going on in the atmosphere, in the oceans, in the forest, what are the drivers, and why we need that energy revolution that they're talking about. It's quite gadgety, bells and whistles, um, and... 
I'd like to see what the Science Museum does in terms of engaging young people with school workshops to perhaps mellow that out. What well, would you like to see the museum talk about in terms of time scale? Because there's not really much about anything about how quickly things need to change. There's not, um, and there's things about how the climate might change in the future. We know it is going to change um, quite rapidly. I think that it's, it's not an exhibition that quite has that sort of urgency about it, and I think that is something that, um, you know, it was a new gallery, it's a permanent gallery, that could have been... That could have been more of a focus because we do need to act now and I think children in particular and the young people need to understand that everybody has a part to play. Uh, and I should say that that would start with the Science Museum having their own part to play and not having a sponsor that is wrecking the planet, indigenous people's rights, helping to bomb um, Gaza. It's just, it really strikes the totally wrong tone in terms of what we're trying to do with the museum, which is to open up people's minds to think about difficult issues in a way, not to cause harm. I think that's what we're all here for, scientists, you know, museum professionals. We don't want to cause harm, we want to be able to make things better, um, and this doesn't really help. If you, if you were to have one, uh, one, one minute meeting with Ian Blatchford in his office right now... Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> Uh, what, what kind of things would you be saying? What would you want him to, to know? I think I'd want him to know that museum professionals are not behind him, actually. You know, he seems to be very out of step. I don't know about people at his own museum, but certainly climate change is a big issue in the museum sector at the moment, and it's difficult. We don't, you know, a lot of people don't really know how to use their collections to ha make these conversations happen. But um, I, th I think it would be a reality check, taking him some data about, you know, how the museum sector feels about this and how the public feels about it and how we should be reflecting that in our exhibitions. Well, I see. Yeah, very, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pete. Right, I'll give you this as well. Yes, yes I keep forgetting my microphones. Fantastic. Okay, so I believe that people have been given an opportunity to leave by the museum staff. Um, and they're saying that the people need to leave now. Um, so some people are departing. Um, we are going to talk to... Well, I'm continuing the live stream, so I'm going to have to stay, I think. Uh, would you like to have a word? Sure. A quick word? Are you hoping to leave? I do. Sure, let's try. Let's have a go. Okay, uh, we can do it with the mask. If you hold, maybe hold that just a bit below it's your okay. mouth. You, you know can what, speak. I can take the mask yeah. off. Oof. Uh, sorry, pin it. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, is that, is that going to work? That will be fine. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself and talk a bit about what, why is Adani making you mad? Uh, my name is Deborah. I'm a specialist of statistics and data science, mm -hmm. and I believe that Adani and their sponsorship money has no place in the Science Museum, particularly in a gallery that's supposed to promote clean energy and renewable energies, and I'm here today to protest this. Is there anything from your scientific background in data that's made you have a special perspective about this? Absolutely, yeah. Um, evidence behind uh, the generation of greenhouse gases attributable to industrial activities and particularly the extraction of fossil fuels. It's, it's very, very clear. It's a major driver of all greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. Um, it's increased in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, even though we already know from data and evidence that it's a terrible thing to do. And more and more the evidence is showing that we are heading towards a very dangerous point in terms of climate and environmental breakdown. The Science Museum is the place where we should be talking about this kind of facts, talking about the real science behind it, and not giving a platform to a coal mining industrial. Should they be doing more in general, do you think, about making climate change? Making the urgency of climate change, I should say, um, apparent to the public. Absolutely, I believe so. I understand that it can be a difficult topic and 
unfortunately, it's a bit unfair. It's sometimes portrayed as a politically sensitive topic. Mm. But I don't see it that way. I see that as facts, uh, and particularly facts that are going to impact all of us in the very near future, unless we act right now. I think that's a really important point. Like, why is it seen as such a political thing to not have to mention or... Because getting a sponsorship deal like this is definitely very political. <laughs> so It really is, yeah. and it really feels that way. And it's very frustrating from a scientific perspective to see how political this kind of discourse has become. I think mm. it's reflective of a general breakdown of a political and economical system that we're living in the power of corporate money and particularly the power of energy money in politics today is quite palpable and I think particularly in situations where we are going up against this conventional discourse mm. we feel it more than ever. Yes, it feels like the last couple of years have been harder than ever actually to make to make the it's been like a doubling down hasn't it on all fronts like government police it, it's um, been um strongly confounded by a wave of disinformation which mm. itself is a tool of political oppression in some sense isn't it uh you can distract from important urgent conversations notably conversations around energy use and climate change by drowning it in a flow of disinformation and politically motivated disinformation. Mm. I see the sponsorship of Adani for this exhibition here as no different in some sense. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yes, it's a way of um, gilding the truth, I suppose, isn't it? Or some people, yes, whatever you want to call it, greenwashing. So, yeah. Yeah, greenwashing is a form of misinformation. Yes. And, uh, I want to be here today to protest against it alongside uh, the other wonderful scientists who've decided to come down for the mm. occasion. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's good to have your perspective. Everybody we've talked to has, has had different perspectives, which is a really nice way. It's being in a coalition like this, yes. you get a lot of, um, of different you know, years of experience coming at all different angles. So yeah. um, thank you very much. Thank and you. Speaking of that, I am going to... Um, so um, we've talked to a good variety of people now going around the gallery and um, I should mention that because we don't have anybody here from um, an indigenous um, Australian Aboriginal perspective um, so the first that I ever heard about Downey was when they were blowing up a cultural monument of the Wanganjangalingu people um, in Australia and I believe that that was 2021 um, and um, things of that that was I thought this as well as you heard I, I work in heritage and museums so this was something that I thought you know this is beyond the pale how can they do that and um, then you know the whole can of worms opened from there and uh, Australia is an area where Adani has significant interests um, and is mining extensively on indigenous territories um, um, in some cases with permission but there's been reports that um, that aboriginal people have felt like they were, were manipulated in order to give consent um, for these projects um, and Ian Blatchford who is the director of the Science Museum he um, had a very strident uh, interview on Radio 4 um, a few years ago where he was defending Adani and saying that the, we shouldn't be listening to these, these indigenous activists because they can, uh, they, they can um, well, I'm not sure he said make things up, but they can make it sound a lot, more worse, a lot worse than it is and, and we need to be uh, sensible about this and that was just, that did not sound, sit right at all uh, with me or with those communities who were extremely angry about that very public um, show of support for Adani as a company, not even as a sponsor of the Science Museum, but as a company um, from this public body um, of the UK. So I just wanted to give that perspective because I don't think that we have anybody here who will have 
a lot to say about that. Um, but like I said, it's just so many issues to do with climate justice um, and human rights coming together here, which makes it so appropriate that we are occupying the Science Museum uh, in London. And the idea is that uh, activists will here, be here until Sunday morning. They're going to interact with visitors in this gallery throughout Saturday and try and make them aware of uh, what's behind all of the objects and information laid out here, the financial and, um, backing that's allowed it to happen. And um, I think on this live stream we'll also play in a video from Culture Unstained at some point, which is a campaign group against, um, well, for, I should say, ethical sponsorship and particularly against fossil fuel sponsorship and saying that there, that there are restrictions and guidelines as to what museums should do um, to have ethical sponsorship and um, those have not been followed as far as we're concerned in this case. So I'm just going to try and find whether anybody else would like to chat. I think we've got into a bit of a, a rhythm here where the museum is closed to the public. Um, we are starting to bed down and um, there will be an overnight, uh, well, an overnight stay. And for some people, two overnight stays. Um, we're never, never sure how exactly the museum will act, react, whether they'll call the police. Um, that's still a possibility, but until then, we are hanging out here. So let's see if we can talk to any more people before we wrap up the stream. Hello there. I'm doing a live stream at the moment. Would you like to say anything about why you're here, either of you? Um, yeah, I can do. Okay, why don't we go into a place where I have a little bit more light, if that's okay, this way. Yep. <laughs> what, do you want us together? Uh, if you'd like. Yeah, yeah can do a double do, act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, so if you could hold that in that case and just share it between you. Okay, so, oh, it's still a little bit dark. Let's move this way a little bit. Very poor lighting here for our video. Um, great, okay. Uh, so we've spoken to people who were scientists today, we've spoken to the youth um, and some people from India who were talking about academic freedom and um, human rights abuses. I'm wondering what perspective you bring here about why do you think Adani should not be um, a sponsor of the Science Museum? Well, I mean, I think mine is maybe as a parent so um, I'm involved with XR families. We've been coming many times to this museum to talk about greenwashing and, you know, like the impact of the sponsorship, you know, on, on really the integrity of this museum where we take our children to, you know, we take our children here to learn about science, but without ethics, you know, our integrity science can be really harmful, you know, like technological de developments. And we can see with Adani, for example, the use of drones you know, um, with the partnership with the Elbit system, you know, the use of drones to kill Palestinian children at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so I think for us, you know, it's just, again, pushing this museum to, like, stop taking the money from this fossil fuel, um, um, sorry, for this coal, kind of coal, uh, massive coal company, uh, and also involved with human rights abuse. Um, and it's not only this gallery, because, you know, obviously this one is, is the new gallery, but there's Equino as well that sponsors some of the children activity. That's true, the Wonder so Lab. The yes. Wonder Lab, you know, which is wonderful. But again, you know, being associated to the company that's extracting like oil, you know, um, and at the moment being linked to Rosebank Oilfield, you know, that we know is a massive betrayal of our kids. Um, mm. So, yeah, so that's my reason. Would for you bring your here. children here? Um, I mean, at the I, moment, I brought my daughters for protest. <laughs> so um, she's been here a few times because we've protested here a few times. But otherwise, no, it's not the place where I would, you know, want to take my friends. I wouldn't want them to take their children here, because I just, you know, I just think again, like we teach kids about honesty, you know, honesty and uh, and not lying. And mm, if they come so here true. and. This um, exhibition, you know, there's like lots of interesting things here, but like knowing that the museum is taking money from people who are actually making the situation worse and destroying those kids' futures, you know, it's just like, yeah, uh, I think it's just, just disgusting. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, it's very difficult when we want to think about truth telling in museums. There's so many issues with doing that, but one thing you can do in particular is to not not to have dirty money behind your exhibition. So, thank you. And yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, well, um, actually, I've had a sleepover at this museum before. It was probably about 20 years ago down in the, the lunar landing wow, space. Wow, 20 gallery. years ago, okay. Yeah, <laughs> when my children were little back yeah. then. Um, you know, little would I have known that today I would have been here having another sleepover without mm. the, the kids mm. who were now up here somewhere. Um, yeah, so I was actually quite shocked because although. I had read about Adani and I, when I knew I was coming to to this protest, to this action, and just to see the blatant hypocrisy written on the walls, you know, about just transitioning, and you just think, how can this be happening? You know, how can a company be so blatantly hypocritical and offer this space all about transitioning to a new revolution in energy mm. when they're actually extracting all of this dirty coal in really harmful ways, uh, you know, and their human rights abuses. So not only the carbon that will be produced from the coal that Adani is extracting, but also the fashion in which Adani mm -hmm. is extracting the coal and the effect that's having on, on people, local communities. So, so, so a, a just or fair transition away from fossil fuels for whom? What, what do they mean by that exactly? <laughs> exactly, it, it just none of it makes any sense, especially in a place like this, which is a place where people People have great faith in this in this museum. I think it's it's greatly revered in London and in the world. And yet, you know, how how can we allow this to happen? That you know, we're we're offering this to our children and to you know for the for the future of our generations. And yet, it's completely sullied by the sponsors. You know, by Adani, who is doing the exact opposite. So yeah, my really feeling is that it's a. It's a very consumer-focused exhibition saying, just keep doing what you're doing, it's going to be okay, technology will solve this. Mm. Is that what we need? No, no. I mean, technology isn't going to get us out whether we need to stop, the, you know, we need to stop the dirty fossil fuels um, and not kind of create fancy exhibits that just distract us from from the real work and obviously there's there's also the the you know the Palestine armament issue which is just absolutely horrendous you know when we've had every Sunday every day people are up in arms saying this can't be happening this is genocide mm. and yet you know this this museum is taking money from you know, from a corporation that is actually producing the weapons that, that are causing the genocide. Mm. And I think if people knew that, I'm looking forward to telling people that are coming yes. to the gallery tomorrow, tomorrow. Mm. I think there'll be a lot of people who will be really shocked and will be thinking about that. And I'm hoping that they will put comments to the museum to say that we won't have this. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, being in the Science Museum, I'm not massively surprised to see that this would include quite a lot of, you know, untechnological solutions, like some of them which, you know, already exist and we know are going to play a massive part. So, you know, like talks about insulating building, you know, this is something that we've seen in recent campaign, you know, is critical. So. I think on the content, I've not seen everything, but uh, I don't think that it's not relevant. But again, there's not maybe not, not uh, that critical thinking on like the values that go behind it as well. You know, it doesn't talk about obviously like economic system and consumerism. You know, in general. No. But, for example, for example, at some point it talks about renewable and how uh, minerals, like rare minerals, are going to be more and more needed and critical. But you know, does it talk there about like potential human rights abuse and extractivism and you know, like the countries who are currently like being destroyed, you know, for the sake of producing those batteries for the EV cars that um, countries in the waste want to have. Yes. Um, so yes, you know, I think it's good to put those things in context beyond the technology itself. There's huge ethical conundrums, aren't there, that science actually can't answer, but science is a part of what we're weighing up here, and it would be nice yeah. to think that that was part of the exhibition as well. Yeah. 
um, and the, the kind of the values behind that as well, exactly. rather than just just yeah. um, saying here are some objects that are going to help us out of this. Obviously, museums are about objects, but they should be about ideas of as course, well. And I we think. see museums doing it, like um, having been to the uh, Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition at the Natural History Museum, like every year. Um, you know, like I've seen like the content developing every year as well, like how much they um, talk about climate change and the impact on on nature and biodiversity. You know, so it, they don't only show like the pretty pictures. You know, they explain as well like what is happening to um, to those ecosystems. Mm. So you know, they bring that content to people about the natural world, but they also explain how the natural world is like being destroyed at the moment. So this is something that this museum could be doing. So you know, talk about the science, but also talk about the values and ethics that need to go alongside the science mm. and also like questioning you know where uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that where. shouldn't be a threat to science it should be helping it yes. helping it to help us I think. yeah thank you very much thank you thank you yes <laughs> Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show people a bit more about just what's going on now and then we're going to wrap up. Um, it's all very calm after us producing our coal piles. So that's just about us wrapping up here um, for the live stream at the Science Museum. It's going to be a long uh, 24 hours plus ahead. Protesters are going to be here, they hope, for Saturday evening. Um, sorry, Saturday through the day, engaging with visitors, Saturday evening and then leaving on Sunday morning. The whole idea is not to disrupt the business of the museum at all, but it's to get the message out there about Adani's sponsorship and to really make visitors aware of what they're coming to see. Um, so we want everybody opinions about this because really this is a public body and the Science Museum should be following the opinions and the public mood of their clients. So please share the live stream, use it as a tool to uh, help others understand the issues and uh, if you're interested maybe you want to come along and have a chat with us. We are on the second floor mezzanine in the Energy Revolution Gallery and we'll be here till Sunday morning. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm very happy to be here today on this momentous day for the inaugurations of the Energy Revolution Gallery at the Science Museum. I have always believed that our lives are part of a bigger story. It is our duty to take care of our planet, not only for this generation and the next, but also for the generations to come. This new gallery is about more than just a clean air or about moving away from oil and gas. This gallery is special because it makes us think, dream, and wish for change. It shows us how our world, our economy, and our own lives can change for the better. We're outside the VIP opening for the Energy Revolution Gallery at the Science Museum. We've just been talking to the invited guests in the queue, which included journalists, contributors to the gallery, trustees, and highlighting to them that far from being some progressive, climate-friendly company, Adani is the world's biggest private producer of coal. So it's Adani Green Energy, the renewables brand sponsoring this new gallery. But the reality is it's not separate from the rest of the Adani group, which is involved in coal mines, coal power, weapons. So right now, 
Adani is forcing through these coal investments on the lands of indigenous peoples in India and Australia who have been resisting for years and years and years before this gallery was even a thing. We have some flyers just for some information and everyone in the queue was open to having a conversation, learning the reality about Adani. But security were very heavy handed for a time pushing us out of the way and really wanting to shut down the conversation about the sponsor. I mean, if the museum is so determined that being sponsored by Adani is the right thing, which it's not, it should at least be accountable, open, and invite the debate and the scrutiny. The museum hasn't even announced that this gallery is opening, and it opens next week. So there's been this desire to try and dodge controversy, avoid embarrassment, because they know that Adani is toxic, it is a human rights violating company, it is mired in controversy of corruption. They shouldn't have touched them with a barge pole. And this sponsorship deal will end sooner or later. Adani is also partnering with the Israeli weapons company Elbit Systems. And Elbit produces drones and other weapons currently being used on the Palestinian people in Gaza right now. And so by working with them, Adani is profiting from that genocide of Palestinian people happening right now. And so yes, it's about coal, yes, it's about climate, but it's also about justice. We need to stand with the Palestinian people and call out those companies that are profiting from that genocide.